Good morning and welcome to Sunshine Art and Drawing. Today I am doing the oil painting in my three part series on the Joe Academy paint box set. This is my first oil painting I'm just showing you. Um, it was a bit of a practice so it's not perfect but I think it looks pretty good. So let's pop that to the side and I've made a bit of a list of all the supplies that you're going to need to do oil painting. The very first thing you're going to need is oil paints. At a minimum, you're going to need red, blue, yellow, black and white to be able to mix colours. But if you can find a little set like this, it's much better. You're going to need some kind of solvent or paint thinner. I have mineral turpentine because it's quite easy to get, but it smells pretty bad. So maybe you can get an odourless paint thinner, that would be better. Also grab yourself some raw linseed oil because that's what you'll use to mix with the paints to make them thinner and easier to spread. Here is a piece of painting canvas. It's a canvas board. You can also use um, stretch canvas on a frame, which I have one here, and you can find those um, primed already, which is quite handy, but I just wanted to do a small artwork that would fit in frame, that big canvas won't fit in frame. So what you're going to also need is some kind of primer or gesso. I wasn't able to find gesso at the time of filming this, so I'm using acrylic mixed with a little bit of linseed oil. Also grab yourself a couple of containers you don't care about, and a few of your old brushes that you don't mind if they get a bit dirty. Synthetic ones are probably the best because they're easier to show the paint strokes. Also, make sure to wrap your oil paints in some cling wrap and have a bit of a palette to spread them out on. And to cover your desk or surface with some newspaper just to protect it. You're also going to need some sort of toothpicks or something to stir the paint with and also a rag to wipe your brushes on. And plenty of time. You might want to spend a day or half a day on this. It's going to take a bit of time. So grab one of your larger brushes, doesn't matter if it's round or flat, and grab some of your primer or gesso and put a nice even coat, it, preferably regular, like a pretty thin, like you don't want it to be too thick, but you want to be able to see the colour. So if you have tinted your gesso, which you can do with a little bit of acrylic paint just to make it a colour, so if you're doing an underwater scene you might want to tint it a little bit blue just to save yourself some time, you can do that. Just mix in a little bit of oil paint or a little bit of acrylic colour and mix it with your gesso and prime it with that. And you're going to need to give this a bit of a chance to dry. It took me a little bit of like painting in different directions to make sure that it was evenly coated. And I remember that canvas panel and canvas stretch is fabric that is stretched and then pinned onto a board. So you need to paint in all directions to make sure that this canvas fabric gets every single little spot covered in paint and it's a nice smooth surface to start with. Gesso has a bit of a, I guess it's like a grit or a sandiness to it so it gives you a bit more texture. If you're using acrylic paint it's going to be a bit more smooth. So if you really need that texture probably maybe pop out to an art store and find yourself some gesso. I just wasn't able to find it locally where I was. But I'm definitely going to get some for you know, future oil paintings. The good thing about oil painting is that you don't need very much of the actual paint itself. So a set of oil paints, especially a little set like that, it's going to last you quite a while if you don't oil paint very often. I've painted maybe probably about 10 or so paints and like at this point with the oil paint 10 or so times and there's still about, you know, there's only about a third used. If you want to use a little bit of linseed oil, you just need to dip the very edge of the brush in there. The oil, it, it sort of soaks up into the brush quite easily. So if you're trying to be like um, only use a tiny bit, then sort of tip it to the edge. That's why I like these little cups. They're actually um, Chobani yogurt cups and they work really, really well for artwork. So once you finish painting, just let it dry for around 10 to 20 minutes. I had a timer set, but I accidentally started it again when I put it down. So it was set for 20 minutes. Um, and then grab yourself a pencil and sketch out what you want your design to be. So I'm just looking up a bit of a reference photo at the moment just so I know what I want to paint. And then I've grabbed one of the pencils that came included in the set, sharpened it up, and I'm just doing a bit of an outline sketch. Don't worry if your outline sketch is a bit off or it's not quite perfect because you're going to be painting directly over it. You're not going to see any of the lines. So just sort of add in any details that you make sure you want to capture. Just remember the feet. 
and I'm going to have him sitting on a little branch. So I'm just putting in the branches and all of that. And a bit of sort of a space around his eyes just to make it a bit lighter there so his eyes stand out. Now, I also wanted to add a bit of detail to the little branch. So I'm just getting some reference photos of some flowers. And I'm going to put some flowers on this branch and some leaves. The one thing I've learned about art is that not a lot of it is done out of your own head. A lot of it is reference photos and ideas that you've seen from other things that you want to kind of replicate. And you're not copying like exactly what the other person has. You're really just kind of going, well, that's the shape I want or that's this, the angle I want my object to face. It's very handy if someone's already done it or you can find a photo. That's when I realized I'd restarted. <laughs> and I'm just grabbing my palette here. And just make sure that you dip your brushes in a little bit of the linseed oil first. It just makes them pick up the paint a little easier. And this one is one of those brushes, um, sorry, palettes that can sit on your thumb, so it's quite handy for oil painting. And I've mixed each one of the oil colours with about four drops of linseed oil, and then mixed it together just using like a little chopstick. Just um, if you use your brush to mix, you're going to absorb a lot of paint up into your brush. Um, if you use just like a little chopstick or something, you can wipe it off between paint colours. And I'm just going to grab a bit of this very dark brown and mix it with quite a bit of linseed oil to lighten it up. If you think of like watercolour paints, you use the water to lighten the colours, but you can't use water because water and oil don't mix. So using um, a little bit of linseed oil as your water to mix with will create like a much lighter colour. So instead of being that super dark brown that it was before, it's now like a bit of a lighter kind of um, maybe tree trunk brown, I guess. And the handy part about having a little bit of linseed oil on the palette already means that the paint doesn't stick. Um, so it's easy to clean your palette afterwards. And here I'm just sort of getting in the block of colour. So the very first step in any oil painting is to block in the colours of the shapes that you want. So as much as possible, all one colour, because you're going to add the shading and detail later. And I'm just trying to smooth it out a bit so it looks a bit nicer. I'm going to take some brown and just add a little bit of detail around the areas where I didn't think it picked up a lot of paint. So just around the eyes, just make that look a little bit more even. And the hard part about doing an owl is you want to make him look sort of cute and not scary. And that was what I was struggling with a bit. And I'm adding a little bit of black just to do the pupils of the eyes. Now don't worry if you paint completely over the little glint that you're trying to paint in the eye. It's... Um, you can put it back over with white again, so it'll be fine. So I'm just going to put in the pupils. Make sure they're well smooth and dark and all one colour, so no streakiness or missing spots. And I'm just going to decide, I wanted to make the, um, the tree trunk a different brown, so I'm adding a bit of black to the brown. And I'm going to do the little tree branch a dark brown. Ended up making this little branch at the front a little bit longer because it looked a bit strange being so short. So just block in where you want the colours. And the other interesting part about oil paints is the streakiness kind of adds as well. So if you're thinking of a branch from a tree, all of the stripes and the branches bark go in the same direction. So you want all your brush strokes to try and go in that same direction if you can. And yeah, I dropped a little bit of linseed oil on the canvas, so I just repainted over it with a little bit of white and it was fine because I'm going to do a background anyway, so I wasn't too worried about that. And I'm grabbing a smaller brush and this is where I'm going to do some detailing. So I wanted to Thicken out that branch a little bit, add some details of where the bark would be, add the little spots in between the toes of where you can see the branch through it. 
and just add in the little bit of branches that are behind these little blossom flowers. And you can mix um, colors together, but if you wanted a like a fresh color and you don't want to mix another color with it, you can use the linseed oil to clean your brush. You can also use brush solvent, but I avoided that because last time I had the whole room smelling like solvent and it wasn't very comfortable for my nose. So probably use the solvent at the end when you're finishing to clean your brushes and your palette and your table and everything off. Um, but for me, mix like going from one colour to another, the easiest thing was to dip it in a little bit of linseed oil and then wipe it on a rag and the oil came off of your brush. So you were able to continue painting. I'm just making these little red flowers because I thought that was a nice bright colour rather than using the yellow all over it and here I'm just putting in a little bit of white just to make it a little pink so that each of the flowers are a different color looks a bit more natural that way now I kind of understand it's a cartoonish style little bird so it doesn't have to be perfectly accurate and here I'm just adding those feet in with a bit more detail and I added a bit of brown to that tan color just to make a bit more of a I guess more feature on the toes so you can see where the joints are and I'm adding some darkness around the bottom of the owl just to show the shadow of the feathers that would be towards the bottom also adding a bit of substance to the owl to the sides because it looked a bit sort of diagonal and I wanted him to look a bit more rounder and I'm not worrying too much about being perfect because oil paints are pretty forgiving. You can paint over the top of another colour and you can also go around in circles and it seems to work. You can't really do that with other paints. It all seems to break apart, but oil paint seems to be happy to move around in a circle. I'm just smoothing out a lot of those brush strokes with a bit bigger brush because they were looking a bit strange. I wanted it to kind of blend a bit better. It's actually pretty easy to do with a bit bigger brush. And then if you use kind of like a, a stamping motion, like a stippling motion, you get another kind of design, which is what I was doing at the bottom here. A bit of a stippling motion. And I'm just doing the sky. Normally I would do the sky a lot lighter, but I wanted to kind of go from one colour to another. I thought that was a bit more different. And then have a lighter colour around the bird and a darker colour as you moved away from him. And we're getting towards the end here, so I'm just going to do all of this blue. And I've got a smaller brush to do all the little details around the body of bird and around the flowers just so I don't mess those up. It can be hard to do those with a big brush. And this is what I was talking about before. So if you add a little bit of white around the object and then blend it out, although it looks a little crazy now, once I've blended it, it makes a lot more sense and it kind of draws your eye to the center of the canvas towards the bird himself. And I'm just adding a bit of white in there to add a bit of sort of um, sky and clouds. I've just got a little bit of the dark red and I'm just going to mix that with some white and add a little bit of spotting. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm kind of trying to make it look a bit like um, like blossoms. Like, but, uh, like underneath and behind him is like blossoms from a blossoming tree. That was kind of my idea of making it look a bit more detailed. I'm just touching up any areas where I might have gone over with the blue. In any areas where I kind of messed up a little bit, just need to touch it up. And 
And the most important part, I think, is to just sort of touch little bits of white in the clouds and drag them across the direction of the sky. That adds you a little bit of wispy clouds. And if you do that towards the end, then the white will dry quite opaque and won't be mixed in with the other colours. And I'm just taking a few little highlights here and there with a little bit of white just on the branches. And here I'm using, like you can use a, like a little stick or something to be able to scratch into the canvas. And that can also make little textured lines. And I think I'm finished now. So I'm just going to pick up the painting and bring it a bit closer to the camera. So first thing you want to do is grab yourself a little liner brush. Make sure it's got a nice amount of um, linseed oil in it and mix it in with some black. And then get that black really thin. That's what you want it to be, really, really thin. And then twist your brush into it and then sign your painting. It's always important to sign and date your paintings. And there we go. Now, your painting will be wet for many days, so always grab it from the sides or the bottom. Don't touch the top, put fingerprints in it, anything like that. And I'm just showing you a close-up so you can see the texture and the different painting styles of like scratches and things like that. It will get brighter as it dries. I've noticed that the, the linseed oil dulls and it does get brighter as it dries. So have a sunshiny day. Thanks for watching.